So I've opened the index.html file that we worked with last time, Thursday. I'm going to run it uh, to remind myself what it does. Remember, we want to run this in Firefox. Uh, long story short, Google Chrome, its security features are too high or too strong or whatever, and it, our project doesn't quite work in Google Chrome uh, because we're running it on a local folder. If we were running it on a real server, uh, it would be fine. But Firefox will let us run the project It'll still complain, but it'll run the project. So remember to test this in Firefox. So all, we've done, all we're doing for the moment is just opening it up in Firefox, opening your developer's console, and I'm going to uh, move the console to the right side. I'm going to dock it to the right side. I click Randomize. Again, ignore this big scary error right there, XML parsing error. Now I've noticed this for a couple more people and I think this happens randomly so I'll just mention it here. Some people are getting uh, like no result like when they try to do here and nothing happens in the console. People people don't see any result and like why why is this not working? I've noticed for a few people I haven't passed it out yet. I've noticed for a few people you're not getting any result and what I've noticed is some of these error output filters are off. So I guess the thing to be sure of is make sure all of these are turned on. If any of these are off, you may not see anything in this screen. And we look at the code and it looks right, and I check my code and it's not working, and then I realize, oh, Firefox, for some reason, has these filters turned off. So there's my logging console.log does not appear if your logging is off. And then there's these JS errors. Now they're all also color-coded, yellow, red, gray, etc. I guess we don't really have to look at server because we're not running on a real server. But if you have all of those turned on, you should not have any error. You should not have any output missing. All right, so uh, I'll, we're just recapping from last time. Uh, I'm clicking the button, I get the result we clicked. I'm probably going to comment that out now. I know it works. Line 28. And then I'm getting a random network, Vine, this time. I click Randomize again, I get Vine randomly again, or I click it again, YouTube, Twitter. And this is an example where I may not really need to look at that JavaScript error, although I wouldn't rely turning it off because that will then show all that will then hide all errors, which is not good either. But that's what I've clicked so far. I'm getting some random networks. Well, I want to display these on screen, not just in the console. First, what I'll do in the index file, line 28, I don't need that we clicked anymore. I'm going to comment it out. So line 28. We know it works. I don't need that anymore. It just clutters up the console. So we have all of this working. Line 29, we're going to connect to a file. Line 30, we attempt to connect to the file. Line 32, once the data from the file loads, we'll do the following. We're, we're going to parse the data. We're going to parse the raw data into a JSON object so that, we can, so that we can refer to the data within the object. We're creating a string, something to display on screen. And then we had a console log to show that we're, we're, we are loading the data. We are parsing it. We're seeing it as JSON data. And at the moment, I'm saying, show me the URL of the randomly chosen social network in my social network uh, table, so to speak, of the data. We had also, for example, name. We had a name field, dot name. And that gives us the name of the network. And all of this comes from that networks.json file. You can open that one for a moment too to remind you we've got a name field 
desk field, graphic, and URL field. This is the zero width network, the first network, the second, <coughs> etc. We've got four at the moment. I'm going to pass out the sign-in sheets now. Make sure you print your name on that legibly. <coughs> pass it on. Okay, so... I don't simply want to display that particular data in the console, I want to display it on screen. I'm setting up this string, str, string, I'm setting up this <coughs> string that's going to have the, the processed data to display on screen. After the console, str plus equals something, semicolon plus equals. We've used equals every other time. Equals is the assignment operator. We're assigning what's on the right to what's on the left. We're assigning a random number to that variable. Equals. Assignment operator. Here, I forget the name of it at the moment, it's probably concatenation assignment operator. We're adding to the string that currently exists. So if the string had said hello, and then I'm going to add to it world, it would say hello world. With only the equals, it basically dumps what is in there already and replaces it with something new. So don't write this. But if we had hello plus equals world, the string would then be hello world. If I had equals only, the string would say only world. Assignment operator dumps what's currently in the variable and fills it with something new. I want to have plus equals. I want to add to what the string currently has, which is nothing. It's empty. I want to create a string here of something to show on screen. The something is going to be HTML create a div. First what I want to do in there is create an image. I'm going to write HTML here and then display that on screen. Now We've always used double quotes. You should see here, I use single quotes. The reason for that is, if I were to use double quotes as I always do, we've written something wrong. Let's write a string. We start the string, we end the string, gibberish. We start another string, end the string. The double quotes the browser will process this diligently, saying, OK, start the string, end the string. Because when it sees the opening quotes, double quotes, and another double quotes, it thinks it's the first and the last one. So this would create invalid code. To get around that, if you use single quotes, apostrophes, the processor is going to go here. OK, start your double quote, processing, 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 end the double quote. And that will be that, that, that will work then. So single quotes. Source equals some picture. Normally we have double quotes. We have to use single quotes because we've already used double quotes on the outside of the string. Writing a note here. Uh, adding to the string. plus equals <coughs> writing HTML using single and double 
we're using double and single quotes as needed. For the moment, we're going to display a, uh, a static image. We've got all these images to work with. I'm going to pick, pick one for the moment. Pick01.png. And then I want to display this on screen. We have a div placeholder called div social, which we then created an element for element div social. So once we create the string, we're then going to say um, element div social dot inner HTML equals something. The JavaScript is very powerful because it can do logic things and evaluation and variables and arrays and all of that. But JavaScript is powerful because it could also read, modify, and create HTML and CSS. So here we're saying there is some element of HTML. Let's set its inner HTML property to something. Let's write some HTML in an HTML tag. And the something is what's in the string. The string first is empty, then we're filling it with HTML, then we're writing that HTML in the div in the HTML block. If you run that, if you save it and run it and click the button, the randomness isn't going to work yet. But hopefully you should at least see one picture appear on screen. Let's see. YouTube. Obviously it's not random yet. It's still gonna always be YouTube because we said pick one. But that picture did not exist a moment ago. I click the button. Now it exists. We created some HTML and we wrote that HTML in a div. Did everyone see that icon? So writing, writing HTML inside of, a, of an element. That's what we did there. But what this did was it, um, it wrote um, it wrote the HTML hard coded as I, as I, as I wrote it there. It's always going to be pick one. I want a random uh, picture, a random social network. So we have to write some dynamic code here. This is going to get very interesting looking. This has to be written perfectly, or it'll not work. Well, I want to dynamically change this. Not pick one, but pick two, or pick seven, or whatever. I want it to, to, to change every time we click. We have the ability to choose the random, a random number based on how many social networks we have. We can use that to display the picture. So that's going to be data dot social brackets dot graphic so we we saw over here uh, right here from our data let's look in the social table let's grab a random number and then show me its name so here we have a graphic pick one or whatever 
inside the brackets we're saying which one, the 0th one, the 12th one, the 90th one. No, it's the random social one. Dot social is inside of the JSON file. We have all of our networks are saved in this field. So here we're choosing the a random graphic to display in the source. Okay, this makes sense, but it's not it's not there yet. Because if you run it, broken picture because we've got a string here. We've got the quotes. This is not dynamic. When it's in the quotes, it's a string. It's a literal. It's write literally this on screen, not the variable that contains the picture. So we have to do something fancy here. We're going to start our string and then stop our string and then show the, show the dynamic code, then start the string again. Let me write it first, and then we'll do it, because it's it's confusing the first time you see it. So I'm going to stop the string right here, then I'm going to add the dynamic data, then I'm going to add the rest of the string. String, end of the string, plus dynamic data, plus the rest of the string. Notice how weird that looks. Apostrophe, single quote, double quote, double quote, single quote. Let me back up so we can do it. This is what we need to do for this to actually be dynamic. That's not dynamic, that's static. It's string data. The string starts here, double quote. <coughs> I want to end the double quote right here. Source equals single quote, double quote. That ends this string here. And I need to say plus to add more to the string, display this part, and then display this part, and then display the rest. So plus here is concatenation, fancy way of saying we're adding to the string. This is invalid here because I need to double quote to end that double quote. The single quote ends this single quote, but this double quote right here, and that double quote. Don't forget a double quote. Static data, dynamic data, static data. Now if you run it, random picture after every click. We've only got four to choose from, so it's not super random. The more that we have, the more random it is. So, image with the source dynamically loaded. Let's pause right there. Does that does that work for people? So that, um, that loads up the, the picture randomly. That text that we wrote in the description field, I want that to appear when you hover over the graphic. So. image tag with a source attribute after the single quote single quote before the end of the image tag space we'll add the title attribute let's display a message when a person hovers over the graphic 
<coughs> single quotes again because we've got the double quotes on the outer layer. And here would be, you know, a message. But I need a dynamically loaded message like before. Data.social random social dot desk. You should see where we're going to go with that in a moment. So I would recommend we write what we need to write first before trying to figure out this double quote, single quote, plus symbols, because that can get confusing. I'm going to write it here. Data dot social brackets random social dot desk. It's currently not dynamic. It's static. Static text. I need to do the same thing I did over here. End the string plus plus continue the string. So that's going to be right here. Double quote, space plus, and plus double quote. So now this, um, this single quote ends the single quote of title. This double quote is simply for this part of the rest of the code, plus all of that. So now save it and run it. You should get the different networks. Then when you hover your mouse over the network, you should get a little simple pop-up, a tooltip that shows that description. When I hover over Google, I get that description. And when I randomize again, I hover over Vine, I get that description. This line is getting a little long. It's not complete yet. But I've got, OK, I'm creating a div, setting an image, source and title attribute. I then want to display the name of the network, dot name. I want to display the name of the network on screen below the, the network graphic. So I'm going to add to the string here. Uh, I'm, in, I'm still inside of that div. This is the angle bracket after, at the end of image. I'm going to add there a break. Because on the next line I want to display the name of the social network. That's data dot social brackets random social dot name. We get the exact same issue. That needs to be rendered dynamically. We need to do this trick as well. So we need to end the string, concatenation plus continue the string. We can break it up in the right place. Wherever we've got a plus symbol, we can break it up. Not between double or single quotes. So not like where the break is? Like exactly. If we try to break it right there, that's going to cause problems. That string is not complete, and we've introduced an enter, which is going to mess up the, the string. I, I would like to do it there, but a safer way to do it is to break it right here after that plus symbol. You should really only break these when there's a plus symbol. Now it looks kind of weird here and incomplete. We know that it is a continuation of the previous line. So if you do want to break this, let's make sure we break it before the beginning of that string. Another way that we could do this is we could end the string um, right here, quote plus quote, and then that way we can do the break there. 
so that conceptually the break is on the next line. And this is going to look like this, quote, end quote, ending single quote, back from title, ending bracket, from image, plus to continue the string, opening quote, break, and the rest. This can get pretty messy, but if you think about it, you can set this up in a way that looks good. I'm going to keep it the way it was. All right, so we've got the image, we've got a break, then I want to display the text of the, of the social network. Uh, and either or see. We also want to uh, eventually have the name of the network to be an active link that when you click on it, it goes to the URL. So I know we're going to add that. We might add it here right now so that we can kind of see how it's going to be eventually and then we decide where to break the string. So we could before, you might have already done it, uh, it'll probably be okay if you continue, but if we first wrap an A tag, because this is going to render eventually into the name of the social network. I want that clickable. A tag slash A tag. A tag requires an href attribute. href equals single quotes and address. We're saving our address in social.url. So data dot social brackets random social outside of the brackets dot URL. So we're going to need to make that dynamically render as well as the name of the network dynamically render by opening and closing these these quotes. href we've got the href we'll deal with that one in a moment I want to make the um, the name appear so the angle bracket that angle bracket is the closing angle bracket for href when I Close the quote plus, and I need to start the the quotes again. So now dot name will render, will process dynamically. I've got the quotes that close the string before that, and then plus the string starts again. Back to it one moment. I need to check if my code works before I show you the wrong code. So let me just check my code works. So I do see a name. And then the that's trying to render that href, although it's going to be a broken link because that's not dynamic yet. But then here we've got um, quotes plus dot name plus quotes the rest. And we do the final version of that with with the uh, dot URL. Okay, so the, the dot URL needs to do the, the same thing. I need to close the quote right there, plus, after URL, plus quote. It's going to look like this, href equals single quote, double quote, plus, dot URL, plus, double quote, single quote, angle bracket, double quote, plus.
Okay, so if we see that in the browser, we're getting a random network plus its name. It's a highlighted link. If you click, it should go to the network. Randomize another network. Goes to the network. I would like this to open on its own window. Right now I have to press back. How do you open a link in its own window? Blank. Underscore blank, so we'll add that. Uh, do you have a question there, Dan? Uh, what's the break back to this microphone? Exactly. We broke uh, the line. Without it, you're going to see the picture, and right next to it, the word vine. With break, you'll have the picture, it'll break the line, and it'll put the text below it. So I want this link to open on its own window, we need target underscore blank attribute. So if we go back to the code, we have href attribute, and then here, that single quote, that single quote closes the attribute of href. New <coughs> attribute, target, equals single quotes underscore blank. That attribute there opens up the uh, the address in its own window. Checking that in the browser, now it's complete. I can get a random network. I can click. It opens in its own window. Four random networks. Sometimes it doesn't look like it does anything because it's the same random number. When you've only got four random numbers to choose from, four networks, there's not a lot of randomness. If I've got 20 networks, it'll be much more random. So that's a really, really, really long string. It could be broken up, like I said, wherever you've got those plus signs. So one way that you can do this is wherever you've got that dynamic data, you can break it to the next line. If you did that, that'll still work. Here's the string, and then add a little bit more, a little bit more, and so forth. So instead of it being one long line, you can break it judiciously at the right place. Safest place is after there's a concatenation, after we add to the string. Do not do it inside of the quotes. You know, we might want to do it after that break, but mess up the string. This is the big idea with this network, I, um, I mean with this activity, uh, introducing these concepts of JSON, of creating a database scheme, and then loading the data on screen. We have four networks at the moment. Um, 
want to add one more network just to show that once you've got the algorithm set up, the technique, it then just uh, it works once you've set up the, the, the algorithm. That, that often takes the longest. What code do I need to write to figure out the problem? After that's solved, then you just work with your data. So to that networks.json file, I want to add um, one more network. I want to go back to the networks file and add one more network. We've already added, let's see, we've gone up to pick, pick four, pick five. That's Pinterest. So if you go back to your networks file, we have Twitter, and then comma, and we've got Google Plus, we need Pinterest, comma, we've got that whole setup already, so really it's a good idea to copy and paste this. We know we're going to need a name, description, graphic URL. I don't want to forget my commas and all of that stuff. So you make sure you add another comma, because you're adding a new field, so to speak, a new record. And then I'm going to copy everything inside of that chunk from the opening and closing curly braces, and paste it into the next line. I've added a new item after the original network, so comma. This new item is Pinterest. some sort of description, a very visual network. Now let's pick five, and some address. Interest.com slash PMD Interactive. So now running my index file again, now I've got a new network. The algorithm is set up. Create a random number based on the number of networks, display the picture, display the text, the title tag, the link, all of that. The algorithm's done. Now it's just a matter of adding the data. One network, 20 networks, 100 networks. The algorithm just runs diligently and displays the picture and the text and the descriptions. And then an active URL. Pinterest, you need the plus. Okay, slash. No. Only Google Plus uses the plus. What? Only Google Plus. They invented it. All the other networks don't need it. So then that one goes over to Pinterest. Obviously, we don't need to do this together to put the other networks. You, you could if you want to for practice. The big idea is what, how do you write JSON data? We, we've, saw, we've seen this, and we're going to get more practice with it as we then uh, work with the database of our app. And then the HTML file has very little HTML, mostly JavaScript, to process this data. Load the data, do something with it, display it on screen, write HTML and then dynamic content to load up at the moment necessary. That's going to take, that's going to be paramount when we, when we get back to our app. Remember the CBDB app, it's about storing data. We're going to store information of comic books, the name of the comic, the title of the comic, the year of it, any notes, a barcode scan, a picture of it, all of that's just data which then we'll use JSON format to store it in a database, retrieve it, process the data to display it on screen for the user. We're not going to do right now at the moment, well, how do you change it? How do you write information back to the JSON file and all of that? We're going to do that once we get back into our app to save real things, the comic book database general questions on this. I'll put my code in the folder in a moment, but any general questions conceptually of what we've done with this JSON practice file? It's data we're loading, processing on screen, 
data coming from somewhere, in this case from a JSON file, and a little bit from a other kind of database. Question? We've got the element of that div on screen, and its property, we're setting the property, the HTML inside of that div, set it to whatever the string is, which is full of HTML. Set the HTML inside the object to the string. The object is LDiv social. LDiv social comes from up here. At the very beginning, we created a variable or an object that is a representation of that div in the HTML, get element by ID. So the div social is up here. There's an empty placeholder div waiting for us. We created LDiv social, and then we're setting the property of HTML. We're writing HTML basically inside of that div. So the optional book that I mentioned previously, that HTML book and that other book, the JavaScript book, uh, if you got those books, again, we're not really taking things directly out of those books. It's, it's optional. But I would recommend look through those books, especially the JavaScript book. Uh, we're doing it much more hands-on for a specific purpose. But reading through those books, they give you a, a sense of like more of the why. Um, and those books are very good references that give you the list of all of these possible codes. You don't need to know every HTML code, every HTML tag. You don't need to know every JavaScript tag, property, and so forth. You just need to know the one that you need at that moment to do something. So those books that I mentioned, they have an index where they list all the tags, and you can look them up. You can also look them up online. And that book that I recommended is not really like a textbook, so there's no quizzes and such. It's more of a reference book. But I like taking that information from those books and like putting them into something tangible. This is an activity that comes from a variation in one of those chapters from the JavaScript book. Because it's about loading data dynamically and processing it and so forth.